Shenmon Benimaru is one of the most beloved and popular characters in Fire Force and has a reputation of being one of the strongest characters in not only Fire Force itself but within the shared universe between Fire Force and its sequel Soul Eater. Today I will be going over Benimaru's strength at different points in the series and discovering just how strong he actually is. By the way, this video serves as a part 2 to my Shinmon Benimaru Explained video which should pop up in the top right corner. That video isn't completely necessary to watch before this video though so don't worry about going to watch that now. And before we start it would be great if you left a like for the algorithm and subscribe to see future content. When Benimaru is first formally introduced in chapter 33, he is immediately labeled as the strongest fire soldier and has the title of Destruction King of Asakusa. So that alone puts him at the top of the totem pole as well as the fact that he is the only hybrid pyrokinetic in the series, being able to wield both second and third generation abilities. A bit later when the 8th goes to Asakusa, we see glimpses of his true strength. When Benimaru is fighting an inferno in chapter 39, Benimaru is seen controlling multiple giant flaming matoi and destroys houses, each one being able to completely destroy 4 or 5 houses with just one hit. When fighting the infernalized citizen, Benimaru puts the infernal to rest with his bare hands, sticking his arm straight through its core without using his pyrokinesis, something that Captain Obi usually needs a tool for. In chapter 42, after Benimaru is tricked into thinking that Obi and Hinawa want to turn the citizens of Asakusa into infernals, Benimaru takes on the entirety of Company 8 and makes quick work of them. Benimaru quickly dismisses Maki who is not only incredibly physically strong but also well adept at hand-to-hand -hand combat being a former soldier in the military. Benimaru also defeats Arthur, Lieutenant Hinawa, and Shinra with relative ease, those three being some of the strongest combatants in Company 8. The only person able to land a hit on Benimaru throughout this entire fight was Obi who was borderline superhuman when it comes to his physical strength, and even then Benimaru just got up and decided to stop playing around and kill them with Nichiren, but is stopped by Kanro. In chapter 49, while fighting a demon infernal, Benny tries to punch through its core only to figure out that he can't, although I'm sure that isn't the cap to his physical strength since he was briefly able to overwhelm the demon in combat. In order to defeat it, he says he needs to go to higher ground so he doesn't destroy the entire town, which is completely plausible considering how Kanro, who was weaker than Benny Maru, blasted a massive crater into the ground when he was fighting a demon infernal. Benimaru uses Nichiren on the Demon Infernal, but to his surprise, it doesn't do enough damage, so instead he uses Crimson Moon, which not only completely destroys the demon, but also dyes the sky of Asakusa red in the process. The next time we see Benimaru fight is the first time he trains Shinra and Arthur in Chapter 64. Since he is just training these two, we don't see anything more impressive than what he has previously displayed, but we do learn two important parts of his fighting style and technique. The first thing he teaches the pair is the breath of life, which allows you to focus and sense your opponent's killing intent in battle, which he seems to use at all times. The second thing that he teaches Shinra specifically is an important part of his fighting style, the hand signs he uses to control his fire. These basically help Shinra and Benimaru control their flames better, thus giving them more firepower to work with. We don't really know the specifics of what each sign does besides the tiger sign that he teaches Shinra which focuses on increasing the fire in one's legs. While invading the Holy Soul Temple along with Joker, Benimaru is shot by a poison dart and collapses but gets up after a short amount of time. The poison he was shot with was strong enough to kill large animals but he is seemingly just naturally immune to poisons. He says he has no idea how he was able to get up, however my personal theory is that his pyrokinesis automatically burns any toxins out of his bloodstream, but again that's just a theory, a game theory. He's also shown fighting and defeating a horde of the holy soul shadows with a very low difficulty, only using martial arts and some of his pyrokinetic techniques. 
When faced with the captain of the first fire force company, Captain Burns, Benny expresses interest in fighting him, but this ultimately doesn't end in an actual fight and nothing comes from it. During the Stigma arc, Benny Morrow trains Shinra and Arthur again, however the two are massively more powerful than the last time he trained them, on top of being enraged due to Benny Morrow's hazing. Benny takes them both on at the same time and fights them for hours on end without even breaking a sweat. Benny displays a high level of speed, being able to counter Shinra's rapid, which allows him to move massively faster than usual, specifically moving at hypersonic speeds, utilizing jet propulsion with a hand sign Benny Morrow taught him before. The most interesting thing that we learn in this training session is the press of death and hysterical strength. Hysterical strength is an ability that allows a power kinetic to use 100% of their ignition ability instead of the 30% that they can usually use. Benimaro has access to this ability but has never actually been stated to have used it in a fight. I don't think this means he has or will always be fighting at under 30% of his full potential but it certainly means that he hasn't gone all out just yet. During the Obi's rescue arc, Benny Morrow, disguised as Moonlight Mask, reveals the ability to control all heat, including other ignition abilities, within a 4 meter radius of himself, protecting him from attacks coming from the likes of Kadon, who completely obliterated Shinra in their fight, and he was also able to absorb and reflect a blast strong enough to put a noticeable crater in the moon. He is also able to avoid and counterattack Dragon, who would go on to drive Arthur to his utmost limit. And while his attack did not do any damage to Dragon, it should be noted that he was just playing around since he was not there to fight and was only there in order to save Company 8. Benny Morrow is already hard to hit due to his natural fighting abilities and the ability to sense the breath of life, so this barrier just makes him near invincible. The Asakusa Shodan arc is where Benny Morrow fights the most and where his greatest feats come from. During his fight with the doppelganger of his former master, Hibachi Shenmon, Benny Morrow pulls off some crazy stuff. Using his EI hand chop form 3, Akebono, the pillar of fire he creates puts a massive hole in the clouds above him. The fire produced in the fight the two are having is so strong that it is causing reality to warp, making the ocean look like a painting. The fire of Benny Morrow's former master is so powerful that just the shockwaves and heat from an attack cause a massive hole to form in the ocean. The reason I bring this up is because Benny Morrow knows all of Hibachi's techniques and is also stronger than him so I think it is more than reasonable to assume that Benny Morrow would also be able to achieve this as well. This fight ends with Benny Morrow completely destroying the doppelganger in one attack, the Crimson Moon Sun Wheel, and this attack is so strong that it ends up warping reality and changing the moon into the moon we see in Soul Eater, which is absolutely insane. Before I move on to this last thing, which is Benny Morrow's fight with his doppelganger, I need to explain how his doppelganger specifically works, just to put things into perspective. Benny Morrow's doppelganger is born from the concept of what everyone around the real Benny Morrow thinks of him, and everybody around Benny Morrow considers him to be the strongest. So this doppelganger is just blatantly the concept of the strongest. And the stronger people think the real Benny Morrow is, the stronger the doppelganger is. Now for the crazy part. Benny Morrow's doppelganger effortlessly creates a sun wheel that wraps around the entire planet and could destroy the earth. And then Benny Morrow one shots, and I mean one shots, the doppelganger. One move. Benny Morrow one shot the concept of the strongest without really ever trying. So to answer the question of how strong Benny Morrow is, we don't actually know. Think about this, Arthur at his absolute strongest, steeled for death, was able to cut the earth in half with his most powerful attack. The doppelganger created a sun wheel strong enough to destroy the entire planet and Benny Morrow one shot that guy. And keep in mind, Benny Morrow could also create a sun wheel as big or bigger than that if he so pleased. That is crazy. So, so